In this edition of INN CEO Talks, I'm joined by Power Nickel CEO Terry Lynch. And we're talking about nickel, in particular the metals role in the electronic vehicle sector. Terry, welcome. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having us. You have a very, very exciting uh, position and project that you're working on. And as a matter of fact, I, I see that you're uniquely positioned to meet the needs of the electronic vehicle battery market. Let's start by discussing, you know, exactly what it is that that market needs and why nickel is now becoming so important. You know, basically nickel is becoming so important because it's, it's probably the most efficient storage uh, metal for uh, uh, ke chemical composition in batteries. So when it's when the batteries were first invented, I guess for the automotive uh, electrical space, it's probably about thirty three percent by weight nickel, and it's probably heading towards eighty percent by weight nickel. And the reason why is that they're able to substitute out higher cost commodities like, you know, uh, uh, cobalt and lithium, and re and replace it with lower cost commodities like nickel, and still have the performance characteristics they need. So it's generally to, just to make uh, electric batteries more economic, so that Cars can be more economic, so more people can use them, and we can obviously, you know, support the green revolution. I guess. I note that uh, Elon Musk has basically said, if you're producing nickel at uh, the levels of purity that we want, uh, we're gonna we're we're anxious to sign deals with you. Uh, this is a big boost for that sector, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, it, it's interesting. You know, we're at the early stages of of development of our project, yet even at those early stages, we're getting calls from major nickel industry giants, both on the uh, you know, development side of, of the mines and also on the consumption side. So it shows you how uh, desperate they are to really lock up sources of supply for this uh, critical mineral for their, uh, for their business. So let's talk about your NISC project in Quebec. Uh, what do we know about uh, your confirmed resource and your inferred resource? Uh, like how substantial is this property? It's, it's looking very substantial. We, we were very pleased this week to produce our first inaugural 43101, uh, basically close to 4 million tons of uh, indicated and inferred resource, about 1.25% uh, nickel EQ. So a very good inaugural resource. We use very conservative numbers, uh, basically $8 nickel as an example. Uh, another nickel company came out last week and used 960. We use those numbers, we'd be at 5 million tons. So we use th those conservative numbers for, for reasons which, which can, we can discuss, but it also, uh, you know, showcased, you know, through uh, simple infill drilling techniques, we could easily probably add another, we think a couple million tons to that. And then the, uh, the project is open at depth and long strike. So we're super excited about our next uh, already announced and financed 5,000 meter program, which is going to start in, in August. And uh, we're excited about what that can bring. And, you know, I would say commercialization in this space probably requires you to have 10 million tons. And uh, our geological team feels that this project ultimately will have somewhere between, it's gonna be like a Lynn Lake or a Boise Space. Lynn Lake was 22 million tons, Boise Bay is over 50. So we're, we're thinking we're gonna be somewhere in between there. That's a substantial property. Uh, where exactly is it located and what kind of mining jurisdiction are you in? And what is your access to infrastructure? Yeah, great question. Uh, we're uh, happy to be located in Quebec, uh, in northern Quebec, just south of James Bay. Uh, it's in the Namaska area, so uh, there's a, actually a very exciting lithium project being built in Namaska that's already built and will soon be, I think, be in operation this fall. It's close, so we're about 10 miles away from the Namaska airport, about five miles away from the Namaska mine, that's being the lithium mine that's being put in, in production. We're across the road, literally, from a major hydro Quebec substation, so we can drive a, you know, across a major highway and, and, keep, and employees do every day. So we're super lucky to be located in this area for a number of reasons. One, uh, Quebec is probably, I don't know, arguably the best geological uh, district for, for developing a mine, I think, in the world today. Uh, they're very pro-mining uh, friendly. They, they've got uh, financing terms that enable uh, development companies like exploration, exploration companies like ourselves to, you know, to uh, drill efficiently with uh, tax incentives, et cetera. Uh, the Cree uh, Native Indian Band, which is our, our partner in the area, is a uh, very pro-mining friendly, uh, uh, you know, Native Indian Band. They've got a you know focus on growing uh, jobs for their community, and they're cooperating and you know advancing you know a number of mining projects in the area. So that's fantastic. So we've got you know I think good uh, you know good access for community support, 
and uh, you know the infrastructure is, is there in terms of proximity to uh, mine supply towns very close by railway is not that far away uh, so honestly from a project perspective it doesn't get much better than this in terms of location Okay, so what's your timeline? Because I know that you are moving, of course, towards, you're not an exploration company, you are moving towards the development of this as a mine. What's the timeline that you're on right now? Yeah, so we're basically, I would say, you know, got a, uh, another drill program happening virtually now, uh, and then we'll follow that up with another one later on this fall, winter. And at that point, we probably would have enough uh, material to start to begin uh, preparing our PEA. And, uh, and then uh, we'll keep on drilling. Our, our objective would be to uh, find the reason. We've drilled less than 1% of our property. We've identified at least four uh, geological anomalies that look very similar to NISC. And even within NISC, you know, uh, you know the, the main core that we're drilling right now, this is what we would call a pod uh, or a pearl in a, in a string of pearl formation, which is fairly typical for this type of nickel sulfide deposit. And we think there's multiple, and you know, deposits like this around it. And again, every nickel sulfide mine that's in production in the world was not built on a sole deposit. It was always built in these multiple small deposits. So we think we're going to have several of these. And our, our job, really, our mission at Power Nickel is to find them and to prove them up, de-risk them, um, you know, from a, a you know resource category, and then also do the metallurgy and do the environmental works and get this thing to probably to a pre-feasibility stage in a couple of years. And at that point in time, we would probably sell the project, um, you, know, you know, using a bid uh, situation and uh, a developer would come in and develop it. We're, we're really more of an explorer developer to a certain point, but we wouldn't have the expertise to build the mine. There's a lot of really competent companies in that field and uh, we'd be well advised to sell to them at that point. Right, you'd bend into them. So, you know, also when I look at your website, you say this is one of the greenest sources of class one nickel in the world. How can you make that kind of statement? How do you back that up? Yeah, yeah, so that's a great question and fair enough. I mean, basically two things make it that way. One is uh, we're across the road from major hydro Quebec substation. So we're gonna be able to power everything with green electric energy, hydro energy water. So that's one. Two, um, we're going to have a very small footprint. You know, we're going to we'll have a, a small open pit and then declines off it. And our surface is quite, an, uh, you know, uh, close to surface. So uh, so that will make it uh, more efficient from, a, you know, less less harm in terms of, of your digging. And the, and the third thing that we're exploring right now that, that a lot of interesting work's been done on is it, it's turning out that uh, the periodite rock, which carries the, the nickel grade and the, and the ore surrounding it, is also uh, very likely a carbon eater. So, uh, with you, it seems that if you wet this rock down, uh, you know that uh, it will absorb two or three times its body weight in CO two. So, there's uh, been some good university studies done on this, and we're we're working with uh, uh, working with that right now, and working with some cutting edge, I would say, carbon technology firms on on ways to sort of uh, integrate that into our planning and into our development process and we may well find out that that becomes a, a you know, not only a that we become a um, net neutral but we we actually become a uh, you know net positive in terms of being able to actually consume co2 and earn credits and actually benefit the project financially so it's a it's interesting uh, new world and we're we're, we're about uh, you know trying to make it better and and uh, play a role in it so you kind of touched on that at the beginning of the uh, or at the end of your answer to that last question, but I, I can't help but thinking as an investor, why should I care about that? Well, you got to care about it because ultimately, if if you're uh, if you're a polluter, you're going to pay, and a you may pay. There's two ways you may pay. One, you may not get the project approved, in which case your mind's worth zero, uh, and uh, or even if there's a serious threat, you're going to be a polluter. I mean, you only have to look in Minnesota at the, uh, you know, the great copper project that that's down there that uh, Duluth has that, uh, you know, that has not been permitted. I mean, it's it's gotten to a certain point. It's it's economics ready to go, but there's general concern about the water table and maybe it might be a problem. Um, so, you know, if you get in that situation, that's dire for you as a as a mineral owner. So it's very much in your best interest to to you know obviously be proactive and. Make sure that's not going to be the case. So that's not going to be the case with us. 
uh, because you know it's a it's a it's a small uh, mine uh, open pit. It would be a decline from there, so it'd be very efficient, uh, you know, from that perspective. The the uh, the other point I would make is is that basically uh, nickel sulfides are um, come in two quantities, two types. I would say the the, the sort of small deposit high grade nickel sulfides like we have. And then you have like these laterite deposits that you have in largely in, in uh, Indonesia, in the Philippines, et cetera. And these, uh, you know, currently the way they're being done are not positive for the, you know, for the environment They're they're Yeah. They get to ultimately a class one nickel, which is what the electric batteries need, but they do in such a dirty way that any benefit that the batteries would have saved by, you know, reducing oil has been lost by the killing of, you know, the, the jungle around it and, and everything around it, you know? So, so, you know, can they change? Yeah. I think the technology is there for them to change and they will have to change, I think. Otherwise they'll, they'll not get support from the uh, automotive sector. You can imagine if you're Tesla or, or Ford or GM and you're, you know, trying to sell cars to consumers who are generally more environmentally conscious these days, and then you're, you're outed as using uh, dirty nickel. No, that's not going to work for you. So I, I think that there'll be high demand for these clean nickel projects, and we certainly aim to be, uh, aim to be one of them. And from a, from a shareholder perspective, if we're a clean nickel project, it's going to need more money for our shareholders. Well, I'm certain that a number of people are going to be looking at what you're doing because, as we pointed out, the need for class one nickel is rising and rapidly. Uh, I hope you'll come back and give us updates as you continue to move towards next stages of development. Yeah, I'd be very happy to do that. Look forward to always keeping in touch with you guys. Wonderful. Thank you for your time today. Cheers.